No doorbell. Oh. Hi there guys, we're standing at my dad's back door. Um, that's why he's probably got such an interesting doorbell. He's the reason that I got started with flint napping and uh, went on the journey that I'm on. And so, well, we're gonna go in, we're gonna meet him and um, find out what he thinks of the world that we live in. If he's in. Oh, you there then? Yeah, I'm about it. How you yeah, doing? What? Are you going to let us in? I'm about it. Mind the butler when you come in. <laughs> yeah, mind the butler. Hello, Jeeves. <laughs> wobbles. It's wobbles, is it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this is my dad, John. There you go, boy. Thank you very much. Well, what we have here is a fairly packed front room full of musical equipment and uh, a lot of lovely pictures. Um, this is my dad's artwork. He spent many years being a painter um, and an artist before we made the decision before he made the decision in 1975 to um, um, become a custodian of Grimes Graves. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a chat about that. play the guitar and uh, you can paint the picture. Yeah, you've, got three, you've got three <laughs> lovely daughters yeah. and um, a mischievous son. You kind of got yeah. it all, didn't you? Just about. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. You've got a cool cat. You've even got a cool cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When was it? 1975, 47 years ago when we turned up at Grimes Graves. It was, yeah. Yeah, that was a spot of luck. That was a lot. It was a while back, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And do you know there was a bit of a journey into getting into Grimes Graves. Can you, what was you doing before you started that job? Well, I've done all sorts of things, but one of the last things I was doing was struggling to uh, work for myself. I I chose the wrong. I said from nineteen seventy three. I decided to open up a business. And uh, there was a financial crash, and everybody tightened the purse strings, and I went bus boy. Well, <laughs> that's silk screen printing, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Was art gallery in front, silk screen commercially behind the scenes. Yeah, but it didn't take off. No, uh, it was theft, you know. Yeah. It? So, yeah, yeah. what did you do? Did you just see the job in the paper? I did. I knew. I knew uh, when things were going a bit soggy. I. I helped a friend of mine who had a taxi business. We used to run people about every now and again when I had the time and he had. To. And I picked up the custodian of Grimes Graves to take him shopping because he was um, he hadn't got the car. Right. And uh, he told me he was getting out. I said, "Put a word in for me, won't you?" But he didn't. And uh, I saw a job in the paper. Yeah. So I applied for it. Went for the interview. Told him I knew what the site was. I wanted to raise a family in the middle of the forest. Simple as that, really. I remember um, that day. Yeah. I remember the day. I was, it was on my fifth birthday. Mm. And we drove in that little car down through the forest. Mm. And I always remember that I could smell the forest. Yeah. You yeah, know, I could yeah. smell the forest. Yeah. And we drove on to Grimes Graves and we had that house at the top of the hill. Mm. And that was it for the next um, yeah. 13 years. I always remember asking them. Um, I said, yeah, I had 100 applicants for this job. I said, why did you pick me? And they said, well, be quite honest, you're the only one who never asked where the pub was. And I said, well, I knew damn well where the pub was. I didn't ask it. 
<laughs> so, just for those of you that don't know, Grimes Graves is a, a Neolithic ancient complex of flint mines where people were digging for flint um, about four and a half thousand years ago. And my mum and dad became the custodians of Grimes Graves. At the point in time when we first got there, it's quite interesting because one of, well, they were actually excavating one of the mines, weren't they? Yeah. Um, British Museum were doing a survey there. They reopened Cannon Greenwell's pit, the original excavation. Yeah. They reopened uh, Pit 2, which was done by Armstrong in the 1940s. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that we were we were in the middle of... Uh, we got there on the third year of a five-year dig. So we saw them. We were there for a three three summers they probably were the most spectacular time at Grimes Graves has ever been that's when we got there truth yeah, to yeah, be said absolutely. and also Phil Hardin from Time Team was one of the people on the digs and he's yeah. become a good friend yeah oh yeah that was pre-Time Team Phil was a bit of a character you know we'd uh, yeah. yeah so we got together and, and napped a lot we were both watching Newcomer who was um, a professional from uh, in, from the Institute of Archaeology American good napper so we weren't taught by him, we were watched him and picked his brains a little bit, you know. And, and you became a flint napper in the first place, just to show people how it was done that was visiting the site, right? Yeah, there was no interpretation, no valid interpretation them days. Right. It was, uh, they, they just got, drove a car in the middle of the field and said, what the hell is this going on? <laughs> no day. So you had to tell them and show them what we could. In, and, uh, interestingly enough, my dad, he wasn't just a custodian to a site, he was also, um, and is still, a musician and he'd had um, many years prior to Grimes Graves on the road with uh, bands and getting all over the country, weren't you? Yeah, length and breadth of the country, 1960s, no no motorways, well there was one, <laughs> London to Birmingham, the rest was, you know, on the we, trains. we drove on all of them, yeah, sideways in the Ford Thames van. Yeah, well, and and while we were at Grimes Graves, my dad carried on with his music career, and this meant that we were, or the whole family, in the Cortina, going off to all these gigs, and we had a really musical um, upbringing, yeah, as no, you can yeah, see no, in here. So that's right, none of them can play, that's funny. Yeah. You didn't pass that skill set <laughs> on, really, did you? So on that account, I can't really join you, but maybe you can give us a give us a give us a song. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a song uh, originally recorded by Dusty Springfield. Sounds good. I don't look anything like Dusty Springfield. Well, let's see how it goes. I don't, I don't sound like anything, Dusty Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a so, sense of humour. Well, there you go. You get what you get, boy. Play the game of life to win 
children And now I think I've got Much more than a skip and roll To land And there is no time It goes on a bit longer. Hey, it? I think Dusty Springfield would be <laughs> proud to hear that himself, don't you think? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we we were blessed with the music that was always in the house and flowed through our home, along with um, paints and colours. And we, my dad was a good dad, and he gave us quite an experience some of the things that happened while we were at Grimes Graves. For example, one night we drove down Grimes Graves because it was in a bit of a hollow in certain ways. It would fill up with mist. And my dad ran out into the mist one day with a bottle and he said, I'm going to catch some of that for you. But he had a cigarette on the go. And he blew that into the bottle and he came back and he gave us this bottle of mist. <laughs> we were quite enchanted <laughs> yeah, by that. Yeah. And, um, yeah. We went fishing together and uh, fishing trips were good. Come in and uh, see a young man about, or young boy about six or seven years old with a stick with six or seven pike on it. On it. <laughs> yeah. Shooting rabbits off the bonnet of the um, Cortina. Yes, yeah, like a, like a, like a, Afro, like a, what's the name, Jeep, wasn't it? You know, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty wild, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And then, the painting. You gave the painting up for many, many, many years. I only paint when I got the. Um, I suddenly get an inspiration, and I got to paint, paint about four or five, half a dozen pictures, and then I have none of the rest. I'd like to have a look a, at a few of them, but for, yeah. one of the things that I, I think is quite enchanting and uh, really important is that. Um, in this life today, we always have to do things that mean we're making a buck. Mm -hmm. And yet, the paintings that you've painted, you've never tried to sell. And you've painted them um, in quite a special way because you painted the people that you love. And some of them have gone by to buy. Mm -hmm. And I really, personally, always feel like that's the day you won. Mm -hmm. You you won the battle of the financial race when you had the time to paint them friends. Oh, of course, been in debt. I've done the things I've wanted, um, at whatever the cost. Yeah. And um, you know, it's the only way you live your life. If you if if you, if you do things you don't, you know, you got to do. It's all right having a job and going to work. If you but if you don't enjoy it or um, and, or you're doing something just for the money, you get very little out of life. Eh? You know, try to get the most out of life, even if it costs money and even if you got in trouble over it. Well, I might not be able to follow you with the music. Um, but I followed you with the flint, and one day I would like to be able to follow you a bit yeah. with the paint. People ask me often, they say, you taught your son then? I said, no, I never taught him anything. I said, he learnt like a chimp. He was watching every time, there's lots of qualified nappers used to come round the house. Um, he watched everything, he had his own little kit when he was tiny. Um, and, uh, but I tell you, he wasn't taught a thing, and when he needed a nap, he knew exactly how to do it because he'd seen so many people do it. He understood it. Well, we had, thir we had 13 good years at Grimes Graves, mm. and then we decided you decided that it was time that we were going to move on. Uh, so, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. I got tempted out by uh, the architectural industry. I wasn't really interested. I said, People ask me, can you can you make these things? Well, I said I can make them. Yeah, but I don't want to. Why well, is a good flint? <laughs> That's what I told them. And they said, well, you know, it, we could give you this much, and I can't never heard anything like it. You know, that's that money, that much. What for doing that? Yeah, 
okay, well, I'll give it a whirl. And then I did it, I did give it a whirl, and it whirled on to other people and other people, and it was getting so, um, what am I going to do? I can't do both jobs. Uh, I better see, um, I better go with this, give this commercial stuff a trade and see what happens. Um, I still don't know if it's a good idea. But you're still doing it? I'm still doing it. And you're 81 years old? I'll be 82 in a week too. Mm. You will? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, don't forget, birthday of 28. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a wristband made out of mammoth teeth last year. You what do you want this year? Um, the rest of the mamma. <laughs> you want the rest of the mamma? <laughs> <laughs> so we've just come outside. There's quite a few things to see out here, but first of all, um, I'm just going to show you these. Now, it looks like you've been taking some sort of uh, weird trip here, Dad. What's going on there then? Well, these are the art I'm finding inside the Flintstones. Every time I break one open, there's a there's usually some sort of information inside, either fossils or minerals of some description. There are thermal cracks in the stone, and in those thermal cracks, you get the amazing pieces of art, natural artwork, which was formed millions of years ago, long before the, any people on the planet. Um, this one here, um, I spotted a very low quality piece of flint, full of colour, and do you see this little character here? Yeah. It's about to get squashed by this boulder which is coming down. So we <laughs> call that one endangered species. <laughs> right. um, this one, you can quite clearly see that God is creating the universe. There's a whacking great planet out there, look, he's just made. You see him? Yeah. You see him? Got that. Yeah, so uh, that's how that worked out. And uh, this one here is intriguing. Because I was going to call it something totally different. And a young lady friend of mine, she spotted a Cheshire cat grinning. See his little ears, mouth and tail. Oh, gotcha. So I now call it Where's Alice? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lovely landscape. There's birds flying up in the sky and all sorts of stuff. It's beautiful. And all these colours are in the flint. So should we go and have a look where you work? Yep. yep, yep. Uh, you lead the way then. Come on. This is your poly tunnel. Yeah, this, uh, this is sort of winter venue really, or bad weather venue. Um, in the summertime, it's usually too hot to get in here yeah. at all. There's a space in here to work and in the dry. Yeah. Um, and that There's work in progress and flint for building materials. That you They're the rough here. outs for what we call flint coins, which are the corner pieces. They're getting very fashionable all of a sudden, unfortunately. And you know where I'm going, don't you? You're actually standing in my way. You're like, prote like you're protecting it. Yeah, you can come in if you want. Yeah, you're, you're, you're that you. over there. That number thing. You can you, you give me that. I give you that, did I? You did give me that. Can I have it back? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a bit special, <laughs> isn't it? It's a ring. I've got kind of ring ding. I don't know if it'll ring ding. Yeah. Bit like your doorbell. Yeah. It's just a thing here. Yeah, it's a, it's a ringer. It's that's, gonna, that's a nice bit of flint. And where? Yeah, where they've all got to, I don't know. We've had many of them in the past from the various quarries. They come with the gravel. And well, I think, I think, from what I've seen in the book, I think they might originate. Um, the white ones originate in Sweden, but I think that's more local. I think right. that, I think that's a bit of. And when you were 79, is it true that you bought 300 tonnes of flint? Not 300, no. Um, 260. 260 tonnes of flint. And you've got that outside, have you? What's left of it. 
Really? Yeah. Let's go and have a look. Yeah. We're just passing this. This is uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. Let's show us. You got a bit of a fairy grow going on here. They're all the flints I don't really want to hit. Uh, low quality but interesting. Okay. Interesting in what way? Conglomerates. Musical flints. See this? When the, the academics tell me flint formed in burrows of marine creatures, I don't believe it. It grows, it grows around fossils and it stops and starts and here you see flint, an irregular flint nodule being encased in another later formation and I've got lots and lots of examples. Yeah. What we call lenticular nodules yeah. and round balls of flint. Never gets boring does it? No. Nope. Nope. Everyone's a, different. I had a flint like that with a hole for them once and I used to use it as a pipe. There are similarities but there are no two stones alike. So. That's nice. Are you using that? No. It, uh, That's horse the radish. White butterfly caterpillars eat the lot. Right, it's all yeah. radish, isn't it? All radish, yeah. I've yeah. got a cabbage, so I have to put it over there. So, so one of the things that you do a lot of is you do these. Um, these are the things that have come become fashionable. So they are the corner of the building. They turn at ninety degrees. So, and they're made so that these two faces only show, and the shapes aren't regular and they fit the random flints in the gaps um, so you can't see a hard line when they're put together okay but they uh, they uh, they look beautiful when they're assembled quite difficult to make them you don't walk into the corner of the building you know, try and avoid that <laughs> Yeah, there were a couple of years of what? This September, it'll be two years ago since we had eight 20 ton heaps which went all the way to where the flint is up there. Now that's the waste material because it wasn't hand picked, it was just delivered. Oh, small stones, all the rubbish and the good flints together. Everything. So about 50% of it's waste. Yeah. Uh, as a product of random nap flints are in the trailer. Which get uh, bagged up and sent away to wherever they're needed. So what, what, what happens when you finish? Do you wait when I finish that? I've got another 60 tonnes on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I get through that and I'm still alive, I think I'll kick it into touch. <laughs> I'll teach it, but I won't think I'll think I'll about time I hung hammers up, don't you reckon boy? That's fair to say though that with the outdoor life, um, you know, physical life has kept you in good mental health and good physical health. Um, yeah. well into your eighties, you've still if got your marbles. Any, if there's anything wrong with me, it don't hurt. <laughs> 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 so that's all I worry about really. Yeah. Yeah. The number one helper. Send, send me out of the camera. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> 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 Sounds like a pretty fulfilling life to me. Um yeah, in hindsight, I wouldn't have had it any other way. I always wanted to be a rock star when I was younger. I am now, but wrong rock. <laughs> <laughs> I think you became the rock star of... <laughs>
We were down in the forest one morning and we were at a place called Limpford Lake and you had quite a strong connection with that because you was um, a watching brief on this quarry, wasn't you? Uh, one morning you went down there. Kind of, yeah. Watching briefs used to get paid and I never did. Okay. And I, I, you know, um, and I never put a report in either, except when I found something once, yeah, and then I reported it. What did you find? Um, I was interested in a section of organic material that was running right through the middle of the gravels. And um, we'd looked at one end of it once I got the old wine were out, somebody from English Heritage, and we looked at a little section, there was nothing in it but grass. Big, wide blade of grass. And I don't think anybody really analysed it. I never heard anything about it. On the other side of the site, much later, I saw that this organic material was in the section over there, and it was about a metre deep. So I just assumed it had run right the way across the pit. Yeah. Unnoticed by anybody until I went down there. I only went down there to practice making Levalwa points because uh, I wasn't very good at it and I was supposed to demonstrate it. Which is a thin spearhead made about 30,000 years ago. Yes, made in four hits. Very clever. Okay. Neanderthal did it. Uh, and um, to make this, set this up and do it in four hits is incredibly difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought I'll have a go down and practice doing it. Uh, I didn't get any practice doing it because I saw this organic layer and I thought I'd just clean that up, take a picture of it because the flints in there look black and I looked at them and they, they weren't man-made, they were all just natural. So I thought well that's it. Um, and as I was trailing, I trail hit a bone and I could feel it reverberating back in the organic so I trailed it back got out a mammoth rib about that long. Huh. At the end of the mammoth rib and underneath it, directly on top of the gravel deposit at the bottom of this organic, was this massive great tooth. Mammoth tooth. Mammoth with tooth. the roots on it and everything. And a bone in the roots in a bit. That must have felt a bit of a moment. A bit Amazing. Exciting. <laughs> and then carried on messing about with this organic material and then found a big tusk section what was very in very bad condition all flaking away so just exposed it a little bit reported it to the Norfolk unit and they said oh, um, okay thanks for the info but we haven't got anybody qualified to deal with gravels here and mammoths are two a penny anyway in Norfolk okay <laughs> so yeah yeah so oh yeah fair enough um but I wasn't happy with that and um I had contact with Martin Warren, who was the curator of Cromer Museum at the time, mm -hmm. and I said to him, I'm a bit disappointed in the unit not wanting to take an interest in this finds at Linford. And he said, oh, I know somebody will be interested. He said, um, Nigel Larkin conserved the West Runton elephant. He'll be very interested. Right. And I met him down there, and we dug out a sack full of mammoth remains because he wanted to go and identify the species. When he took a break, he came back to me with a hand axe. It's black, as if it had just been made. And uh, said, what did I think of that? <coughs> well, I thought he'd had somebody make it. It, it was nice, it was effective, but it wasn't the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Um, I thought, I thought he'd have somebody You're make suspicious it to him. wind yeah. me up. Yeah. He thought that I'd put it there for him to find, to wind him up. Huh. So we were both thinking about what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, I said, show me exactly where you picked it up. So we did, and the channel feathered down to about that deep, just above that, the gravel. That's where he picked it up. When I started poking about in this thin layer of gravel, I started pulling out these thinning flakes, which were obviously thinning flakes from hand axe manufacture or by face manufacture. So it was there. There's the there's uh, waste material from napping, these sort of things. So um, 
that was reported and then then they had to sit up and take notice once you've got something in situ a place like that somebody has to take it seriously and so, didn't they find about 70 hand axes yeah, yeah yeah when they decided the norfolk unit decided to take it on um in hindsight it ought, it ought to be done by the bm there's a, over a lot of stuff overlooked but we won't go into that um yeah they found in an area uh, so basically what you uh, discovered was a, a neanderthal a neanderthal an, it, butchery, butchery site, butchery site. Yeah, of, so, um, woolly mammoth so when they did excavate it i think they found roughly the f remains of 14 different mammoths plus other animals in there and 70 butchery tool not all classed as hand axes some of them are called as flake flakes and cleavers and whatever but yeah. they'd all been used well, for one butchery. of the reasons i wanted to talk about going there is because this particular morning it was a nice misty morning and i was walking through the forest which was already down there but i think you found yourself somewhere to sit underneath a tree and play a little bit of um a little bit of irish whistle and I became quite enchanted as I was walking through the forest by that. Oh, sounds lovely in the woods. Yeah. It sounds horrible in here, but it sounds lovely. <laughs> well, you're a bit of a dab hand on a whistle, you fancy giving us a tune? Oh, why not? I'll play you a tune that's written by a guy named Phil Cunningham in ten minutes. He wrote, he wrote it in ten minutes because he promised to write something for somebody and forgot. And when he got there, I said, we're looking forward to this tune. And he said, oh, I haven't done it. And so he, he went up to his little dressing room and wrote this tune. Oh, no, let me start again. Warm it up first. Yeah. Can be like that sometimes, can't it? It was very cold. beautiful <laughs> well played yeah so as you can see guys um i've often often quoted that um i've been inspired and influenced by my dad and um uh, i have three sisters who are all alive and well and we all feel like we've all walked on pretty blessed soil for the choices that my mum and dad um made and the life we had together eight years ago i think it was about eight years ago that we lost mum yeah just eight yeah and um but you together you shared that journey of not only grimes graves but then you went on for many years beyond the building materials round all over yeah. scotland and the british isles we kept the educational facility that we developed at Grimes Graves, we took it on the road. Yeah. Um, How about that? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, and uh, it hadn't happened before. There was no market for prehistory 
you know, there wasn't a fee, you know, there was nothing going on. And um, we contacted all the museums in the country, if I remember rightly, sent them a little brochure saying, how do you fancy a uh, caveman turning up and doing some stuff? And gradually, gradually it took us on, and one or two uh, people supported us wonderfully well to to keep us alive, basically. We, we certainly weren't making a profit. Um, far from it. We're going the other way. But um, we kept going nevertheless, and it gradually became viable. And then one or two other people who would talk to Nat, you know, they said, oh, we had to, you know, say, why don't you try this person? We can't do it, we're too busy. Try try this person, they'd probably jump in. And then uh, that, that all started from that. So one, two people we'd talk, took it on. And people often ask me if that was you that was um, in the Ray Mears uh, shows and Ray, yeah. Ray used you and... Yeah, Ray wanted to know how to know. I, I didn't know about him, not even... Uh, you know, um, long time, ago. long time before he was well known a presenter. He was running bushcraft things, and one thing he didn't know how to do was make flint arrowheads and yeah. flint tool. That's so right. Ray, Ray Mears we're talking about there. And he came to see me, and I showed him the techniques. I needed to show him. He's a very brilliant fellow. I mean, once he knew how to do it, he went away and practiced. And he's a good napper. Uh, he taught me things. He taught me how to light friction fires and all sorts of things like that. So we swapped notes and I helped him on his workshops until he got up to speed and then that was it. But bringing a few other things together, you contributed to a lot of universities. You've um, contributed to the preservation of ancient historic buildings. Um, you've supported um, quite a few... Um, museums in terms of making handling collections and getting everything looking right such as places like the Creswell um, Creswell Crags, Creswell uh, Crags. supported us very well and Kill Martin House Museum in particular yeah yeah and um, that kind of finalized in you being recognized and getting a, awarded a British Empire Medal for your contribution to craft that's quite a day wasn't it yeah, getting decorated and smashing up the planet. It's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you, uh, how did you get on with the whole idea? Well, I mean, did it surprise you to know that your son wasn't going to let go of the bit? Meaning that I'm kind of walking walking behind you in your path and your footsteps. A lot of, as old Ben Fogel said, he said the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, you tried a few things, didn't you? Which, um, yeah. And then he thought, what the hell with it? Dad's having a much better time than I am, so I might as well get, get, have a go at it myself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, good for you. I mean, but um, yeah, you 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 deal with a far greater spectrum of of um, technology than I ever went there. I'm very channeled. I stay with the flint, and you've broadened out a lot. I mean, if I make a bow, I make a stick out of the hedge. I don't make a post job of it. Yeah. It works, but it only works for the morning. Yeah. You throw it away in the afternoon. <laughs> Once you've got your... You know, no, I get that. <laughs> um, and there's choices that are associated to that. Sometimes you can't always sell a stick out of the hedge, uh, whereas sometimes people want a bow that they're going to go out and they're going right. to compete yeah, I, with. I, 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 and they're the things that you do to try and... Just like the old days, you've got to kind of get by, haven't you? But, yeah. The one thing I liked about the Neanderthal butchery site was the fact that some of the beautifully made hand axes, and so were some very crude, um, but they were as disposable as a Coke bottle. They made them, they used them, and they chucked them down because they were buttering in mud, so they carried the spare exactly. rib or limb yeah. uh, away uncontaminated, and that's why they're all there. So because they can make one in about 10, 12 minutes. Yeah. They were that clever, and uh, yeah. 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 Well, what do we know? Not a lot, really, do you? You don't need to know much, do you? Think? It's good enough life, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I thought I'd bring you around and spend a bit more of extended time here with my dad. Um, as you can see, colour, music, craft, skills, 
um, happy hearts and, um, you know, a good life. We don't look back unhappy. We're looking back with a lot of fondness over the years. And um, I hope that's been enjoyable for you to watch. So, cheers. Cheers, buddy. Love you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>